Um, and so in this way of working, very much about making relationships or building relationships with other fields. Um, I hope to like, through this interdisciplinary work, like show the connections between all things and that we're all impacted and we can do something. Mm. That to me is exactly what um, that folks tend to talk about under the umbrella of environmental justice uh, work. Um, I really appreciate that you center this on the concept of uh, interconnection. And I love that you're interested in stories. And so I wonder if you can tell me um, like which one of your projects um, you favored or, or that sits with you as having had uh, maybe a particularly special impact on, on you or even the folks that you worked with. Yeah, um, let me, do you mind if I share screen? By, by all means, please. Okay. Um, oh, it says host disabled participant oh. screen. Well, 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 let's take a look here. Multiple participants. Will you try again? I think I fixed that. Oh, perfect. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is my website. Um, I guess I could talk about this work. Um, so a part of my work is I center learning in my work and I'm really interested in craft and fibers as a form of like, as like a form of ancient technology that's really withstood the test of time. Um, and that fibers and food are, you know, give us clothing, they get, they nourish us. But it's also something that I think like every culture or almost every culture has a relation to. Um, and so I see weaving as a, as something that, um, you know, we in the first world see as a hobby maybe now um, or don't uh, prioritize, but many of us come from weaving cultures or cultures that, you know, make clothes. Um, and I've been an apprentice to Melissa Cody, who is a fourth generation Navajo weaver. Um, and she taught me how to weave mm -hmm. um, in the Navajo tradition. Um, and so, yeah, so that's how I learned to weave. And through weaving, was able to, through weaving in the Navajo tradition and, and through Melissa's guidance, I've, I've been able to see how tragedy is a point of transformation and you can locate that in art. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I'm very interested in how you know, weaving is this cosmological uh, practice that, you know, how, how do you get your weave, how do you get to the final weaving? Well, you have to tend the sheep. How do the sheep get nutrients? You have to tend the land. How do you get the wool from the sheep? You have to clean the wool. Um, then you have to spin the wool, then you have to dye. And how do you get your dyes? You, you have to tend to the environment to get your dyes. Um, and then, how do you make a weaving? There's like a community of people and animals and plants and, and entities that are embedded into the ethos of a singular weaving. Mm. And that to me was like, whoa, this is the, this is the fucking truth. Like this thing that we see, you know, is a world of is a world in and of itself because it comes from all these relations that make themselves evident only if you know it. Mm. Um, and so anyway, she taught me how to weave and we um, still work together. And she's the only person that like, I would say I'm an apprentice to. I've studied other forms of weaving. Um, uh, I also have studied Atayal weaving, which is a Taiwanese indigenous loom, 
our footloom weaving technique oh, wow. uh, practice. Um, and uh, I studied with a master weaver in Taiwan, which is where my parents are from. Um, in this in this style of weaving, um, which is a totally different than the Navajo weaving that I learned. And so I put these two weaving practices together to make this piece. Um, so the blue figure here is um, weaving on an Atayal loom. Um, you can see here. Um, and then the, um, the painting is framed in, um, in a Navajo loom. And so I was interested in like, well, how are these two weaving practices connected? Because both were lost, you know? I mean, they're in the sense that like, of course there are weavers weaving in those traditions now, but um, they were essentially like shut down by colonial forces. And so in Taiwan, when Japan occupied Taiwan, they banned the central tenets of this Atayal culture and surrounding indigenous cultures. And one of the central tenants was weaving, another was facial tattooing, and another was head hunting. And all three of these things um, meant something sacred to the tribe, to the people. Like if you weren't a good weaver um, or if you weren't a good hunter, that would you know, show your particular status or lack of status within the tribe. Um, and like women would, and men would, um, get facial tattoos, depending on how good they were at certain things, you know? Mm. And so when Japan banned all these practices, um, you know, much of the culture went dormant. Um, and in the same way, in the same time around, you know, more or less 30 or 40 years, um, the long walk of the Navajo people happened in which the US government forced um, the Navajo people and some Apache, Mescalero Apache people um, to a deportation camp in Bosque Redondo. Um, and, and in this camp, a type of weaving called Germantown weaving was formed um, because with the advent of the railroad, um, uh, uh, the, the soldiers at the fort as well as the interned people um, would get these rations um, of woolens that came from Germantown, Pennsylvania. And so what these Navajo women would do, they would unravel these woolens and reweave um, from these woolens to make their own uh, sustenance, their own clothing or um, blankets. And so I was interested in like the loss of land and the loss of connection, the loss of weaving um, on opposite sides of the planet um, and how they were related. And I wanted to sort of bring them together through um, the connection of weaving. And there's another big component of it too, but I won't, I won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, so. In oh, I love this. I already forgot the question, but I think the question was something like how, how is it, how, what do you want to communicate in your work or how is it? I, I feel like you've answered uh, whatever I asked you and, and, and like question six, seven, eight, nine, that was in my list. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> because uh, things that I was interested in, in learning more about was like, well, what are you working on now? But then, um, how you want people to see your work and describing your process, which you did beautifully. And it makes me feel like when I go to galleries and see art, I should definitely uh, make it a point to go to the openings where you can meet the artists and hear them talk about their own work because th there's so much that can be left for interpretation that I may not get. Uh, unless I'm there with the person and it makes so much sense your your interest in story um, I, I could see that so clearly in in the work um, you know the way that you're you're talking about your influences uh, and you're talking about you know your interest in your concern or of 
how do I bring it together? Like what, what, what brings this together? Not just for me, but like, uh, how does, how do these traditions come together? Like what are, what are links? Um, and, and so I found that to be pretty amazing. Um, yeah, you make me want to definitely go to art openings. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny because I hate going to opening. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it's, it's like I, I have run into the question of like, well, that's not your art. That's not your tradition. You're, what do you think of appropriation? And I think that's a valid question, but I also think that's not really the point. Um, and like it, we would be remiss, I think, if we could only think about things in terms of ownership and theft, which of course is like what the U.S. is based on. Mm -hmm. And I understand the where those questions come from, but I think our less so the ecosystem that it runs in, but like art in its like most human form um, can bridge these connections between difference. And I think allows for a space of nuance. I nuance think, connection. yeah, and I think, uh, I think it makes a difference to uh, intention. I think intentionality uh, makes a difference. I think when you talk about how these traditions are influences in you and you name the person who teaches you and you talk about where that tradition comes from and you give its history and you give it its fullness, uh, that is not appropriation to me. You know, that to me is you have learned, you, you, you have uh, understood that story, understood the struggles, understood that, that experience. So you know um, what it's about and you're, you're bringing it, uh, it's part, it, be, it becomes informing to you so that you can then think about, well, what are some of the traditions within my own culture? Mm -hmm. and, you know, and and so then you look at your Taiwanese experience and like weaving there, and and so if it opens an opportunity for you to also explore that, um, the intention is different than when we look at appropriation within a consumptive um, uh, frame, you know, of experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think appropriation in terms of uh, consumption, it's all about just taking yeah. uh, and there is no uh, there is no reference to the stories or the people there's a disconnection with the culture and mm -hmm. there is no sense of reciprocity or responsibility which I think in the way that you're working with it there is a sense of reciprocity I mean you're still connected to your teacher after all and mm -hmm. and 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 it's not like you're passing yourself off as a Navajo weaver so, right you know so I, so I think like valid valid conversations but I think for me um, what comes up as as important is well what are the conversations being had mm -hmm. how does the person uh, uh, respect and represent uh, that which uh, they have learned um, you know and how does that uh, um, open up conversations for exploring uh, cultural connections within oneself. Like, what is the intention? And I think story, uh, your storytelling experience really brings that together um, also. Mm 